In this example, we will cover how to use our JavaFX. So to launch the, to run this program, first we need to install JavaFX. So here is this JavaFX page. We go to JavaFX page and we download it. So you can pick your operating system. For example, if you pick Windows and 64 bit architecture, and you can download this SDK, click on download, and you will download this whole thing. Now, once it is downloaded, you will extract it. For example, here is my case. So you will extract it. So this is the whole path. I downloaded in OneDrive, so this whole path. Here is a lib where all these libraries are there. And here is the whole folder. But we also need these other files. So I go to this lib and I copy this path. In this path, I can just right click and I can copy it. Control C. I copy the path. Now, after downloading it, we need to set our path to it. For example, for Windows, we have to set our environment variable path to FX to all this path where we download it. And for Mac and Linux, so let's do for Windows. So I go to my start and I search environment variables. Now there is a for admin rights, I have to sign in. And after signing in my admin rights, I come over here, this window, I click on environment variables. And here is a path to FX. I already added. I can show you or you can edit it or if you don't, you, you can make a new one. So here the whole path I added, path to FX. And also please make sure in the, it ends with lib. It's not where the subdirectory where you down unzipped it, but all the way till the lib. And say okay path to fx all the way to lib for library i also have the java home it is nice to include java home as well because if you have multiple javas just keep to make sure that which java version we are using and other paths are same path variable in the class path say okay and say okay so this this path is set if i go on my uh, terminal i can check it um, for example, if I type uh, echo space and then path to fx and then percentage again, it gives me the path. So it means, yeah, it is all set. Now to run that, compile that file, I need to specify. So this part is done. We set the path. To the, this one an echo path we confirmed the path is set now traditionally we we used to do just say java c and the file name for example java c main dot java or java c uh, hello app dot java but in this case we have to also specify to add some modules these modules for example and also the module path where they are coming from so even in the compile and also at the runtime and this is a bit uh, it can be troublesome so i have this short batch file a trick over here let me show you so in windows same command java c then module path i copy paste from there now this is the whole path that i that where my my Java FX is all the way till the lib it is there and then same thing I copied from there minus minus add modules these are the common modules that we need and then the, the advantage of batch file is for example when I run this I will show when we run the batch file we can give different arguments so if I say 
first argument I say it will be percentage one. In 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 Mac and Linux, I will show the shell command where you use dollar sign. So percentage one dot Java, and this is only percentage one. So now if I go to my command line, instead of typing this whole big thing Java C, I can just type here uh, uh, run dot batch, and I can see my first. GUI and as you can see it automatically com uh, completed Java C minus module path and I type run dot batch first GUI it became the first argument over there and I added dot Java by myself so I did the compile and I did the run and I got this output from that and this is my code for the first one uh, first go is not doing anything fancy just import JavaFX application JavaFX stage it is the first GUI and we'll explain in the later about the purpose of these things but this is just to things started that at least you can compile and your path and class path and these things are all set thank you so much